fun. What is popping, everyone? Welcome to the Flea Flicker NFL show. I want to say it's episode 37 or 38. You can quote me on that. Go, go scroll through the, the, the feed and all that and tell me what it is. I honestly am too lazy to do it currently, but I believe it's episode 37 or 38. Um, anyway, week three NFL. I'm joined by my host, Amal Ronak. What's up, Amal? What's up, Parib? Uh, lots to talk about still today. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, the la- latest proceedings coming from uh, the coronavirus that's been happening uh, around the league. So that's going to be pretty – that's a pretty major thing to talk about in terms of news. I think that's the ma- only, like, major news we're going to really talk about today. Uh, and then we're going to head into, obviously, our game recaps of what happened this past week. We're going to – obviously, we're going to exclude the Dolphins-Jags game that happened um, last Thursday night. Um, because we talked about it in the previous podcast. But we'll cover all the rest of the games. And then we're going to go into our power rankings, what we believe the top 10 teams are in the NFL today. Um, and then we're going to go into our game picks to end off the pod. Sounds good? Yeah, yeah, should be a good pod, man. Um, let's just hop right into it. For those of you who don't know, the Tennessee Titans – had a ton of players test positive. And I want Amal to read off the statement that the organization gave after this pretty crappy situation, in all honesty, if Amal has it pulled up and ready to go. Yeah, I got it pulled up now. Um, but so first, I'm going to first pull up the NFL, NFLPA joint statement on the Titans and Vikings facilities. So on Tuesday morning, the Titans' COVID testing results returned three new player positives and five new personnel positives. Titans will suspend in-person club activities starting at the time today. So it started uh, yesterday. Likewise, the Vikings who played the Titans on Sunday will also suspend in-person club activities. Both clubs are working closely with the NFL and the NFL Players Association, including our infectious disease experts to evaluate close contacts, perform additional testing, and monitor developments. All decisions will be made with health and safety as our primary consideration. We will continue to share updates as more information becomes available. And then just recently, uh, it was announced that the Steelers-Titans game, originally scheduled for Sunday at 1 p.m., will be rescheduled to allow additional time for further daily COVID testing and to ensure the, the health and safety of players, coaches, and game day personnel. Details on the new game day and time on either Monday or Tuesday will be announced as soon as possible. So my major takeaway from both of these, uh, both of these statements coming from the NFL and the NFL Players Association is, I mean, clearly there was some flaw in, that, in the system in that game. I mean, obviously, it, it was probably a minor problem. I think if three players tested positive, obviously not like a major outbreak, like probably like the MLB had, for example, with like the Marlins getting like 15 players test positive. It's nothing like that, but three players and five, uh, five, uh, and, uh, five, what's it called? Staff members. I guess it's like, probably like personnel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's still, um, that's still a good amount of people that have the virus um, and it should be zero considering it's been mm-hmm. zero for the first three weeks. This is a major issue, but I think the NFL will deal through it because obviously it could be a lot worse. And uh, right now the plans that I'm hearing are that they could postpone it to either Monday night football. So it could be a double Monday night header I mean, bo- d- double header for the Monday night football games. Like it was in week one. Or it could, uh, they can move it to even Tuesday night just so they can ensure the COVID-19 safety and protocol for all these players and personnel, and especially the referees as well. I know that the referees that were refing the Vikings-Titans uh, game are not refereeing uh, this upcoming week, and they are going through testing every single day to make sure that they are safe as well. And to go along with that, I think, I think at player safety is number one, even over this game. I think safety of the players is obviously 
our top pri- the at least the league's top priority, and it should be honestly the fans' top priority. You want to see the players that this players that play on the field that make us happy, be healthy and uh, and good play. So um, yeah, I, I mean Monday night or Tuesday night, or even if they postpone it to like their bye week, it, it doesn't matter. I think uh, I think uh, what they're doing, they're they're taking the safe approach right now, and uh, hopefully uh, sooner or later they'll give the game and game and time for date and time uh, for this new game. Yeah. So I think you mentioned it. They're slated to play the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. So it's a pretty big game. Both teams are three now, obviously, unless you end up with a tie, like what we did last week, you're expecting one of those teams to end up losing and one of them winning. It's a pretty big deal for the playoff standings as well. So the Vikings side. I was just reading up on the Vikings. So currently the Vikings are 0-3. That's beyond the point. but They're kind of sucking right now. But anyway, so they played against the Titans last Sunday. It was a pretty close game. And they had no players test positive. I just read up uh, up-to-date information as of today. And as of today, zero positive uh, tests for the Vikings, which is obviously a great sign. And it's kind of interesting, like three players on the Titans – Obviously, I don't think they're going to reveal who those players were. So we're not going to know if it's like starters. I don't know if they have revealed who it is. But it's interesting that none of the Vikings players got it. And also, I was reading a Mike Zimmer. He was talking about how, like, they're, so far their week has been entirely online. And they're hoping to get back on the practice field on Thursday. But for the Titans, getting back on the practice field on Thursday, Friday, that's probably an impossibility currently. And I feel like that would be interesting to see what happens. because you could potentially have, well, not necessarily backups because I don't think we know unless you can you, you can double check me, but we don't know if these are like starting players or backups, you know, bench warmers, like who has gotten COVID. It's interesting because they're probably going to go in with no practice, which will be huge. Literally only online game planning, another huge facet of the game. And if they push it back, right? So we already have players complaining that Monday night football or at least Thursday night football shouldn't be a thing because it's too close to, you know, it's too close in between the two weeks. And I feel like having a Tuesday night football or maybe even like a Wednesday night football game, like delaying it is just going to mess up with your next week. So if I was looking at the week five schedule, so currently we're going to week four, like you said, the, Titans are slated to play the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, at 1 p- uh, one p.m. And on Sunday, or rather week five, October 11th, they're slated to play the Bills, another really big game, at 1 p.m. as well. So if you play like a Tuesday night football game, I don't know how physically like well-rested these guys are going to be. And obviously, like you said, safety has to be pr- like the priority of the league. What they're doing, they're doing – like they're doing it for like the safety of the players. It completely makes sense. I'm 100% on board. But there's just a few interesting things you need to think about. Like from the Vikings side, yeah, they've been online all the week. They hope to go back to practice on Thursday, so tomorrow. And if they do, then they'll probably be decently prepared for their game this week against, I'm forgetting who the opponent is, the Texans. I think you said the Texans. And then for the Steelers and the Bills, it's uh, rather not the Bills, the Steelers and the Titans. It's interesting. Like I said, no practice, all online game planning. Like how are they going to come out playing? Are they going to fall flat? Uh, Like you can't tell me this isn't automatically giving a team like the Titans a disadvantage because they're not even allowed to practice. Like what are your thoughts on this, Amal? I agree. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a disadvantage uh, definitely for the Titans right now that uh, they are not able to practice this late. Um, and Thursday and Friday, it's like a best case scenario for those for them. And uh, yeah, having all their information being delivered through like Zoom is uh, definitely a, a toll for, for the team for sure. And yeah, I'm, they're not disclosing the players that got the virus, obviously. I mean, you wouldn't want to unless the yeah. players out and say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yeah, I think the best idea would be to do it. I think on the bye weeks, I think that that makes sense for everyone, and just have them take take the week off. I know, I know, and the NFL did something similar to this, I believe, in previous years, where like if it was like a major like weather 
problem, like a hurricane that happened. They yeah, I think it was like a Dolphins Bucks game, like in 2018, like week one. They postponed it, and both of them had to had a buy at the same time. So yeah, I exactly. don't know when like the Steelers buy is or whatever, but it, it's interesting. Exactly, I think I think it it should work out. But, uh, yeah, if they were to play this week, I'd want the game to be I, – I want, I'd want the game to probably be leaning towards Tuesday rather than Monday because uh, you'd want to give them as much time as possible. But even mm-hmm. Tuesday, I'm assuming that these players will be, will be ready to be on the field for practice, I would assume, like Saturday. Would that be fair? Friday, Saturday? Saturday? Yeah, I mean, Saturday would probably be my bet. Saturday, and then you give Sunday, Monday. That's two nights. Yeah, it's it's tough regardless. But um, it's tough to implement an entire like game plan, put in all your new installs for that team. Like, that's definitely a huge disadvantage. And like I said, I feel like that late Tuesday game could definitely spill over into your planning for another big game against the Bills in Week Five. Just overall, like, there's nothing you can really do about it unless you decide to push back and do some weird scheduling maneuvers, which I don't think they would do because you're just sort of pushing the ball down the road instead of just meeting it head on or whatever the phrase is. So I feel like they're definitely going to play this game if they can, but just no matter what way I try to think about it, it's a disadvantage for the Titans. And again, there's nothing you can really do about it. Like it's just a sad reality. Hopefully not many other teams test positive, but with an infection as, or rather a virus as dangerous as, or, as contagious as COVID who knows where you can pick it up and who knows if an entire team could get it just overall sad situation for the Titans. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is definitely not a situation that the Titans would want to be in, but yeah, I'm, uh, overall, I'm still happy that the, that nobody uh, from the Vikings tested positive in that game. So it's a one team issue currently. Um, now, uh, since we've, that's the only major news that we're having. So now we can move into week three recap. So uh, there's a lot of interesting games this week. We'll go through the ones that like, were like, okay, thank God it finally happened. Um, thank God it's over. Uh, Colts jets. That was a blowout game. I mean, I feel bad for Sam Darnold. Really. That's all I got to really say. Um, Colts now, my Colts now two and one. Commanding went victory. Um, next, uh, Panthers Chargers. That's another game. It's it, it's a it was a close game throughout, and it's still a game that I didn't think needed necessarily a lot of talking. But uh, yeah, Mike Davis uh, took over Christian McCaffrey's role, and uh, he carried it pretty well. Austin Austin Eckler is doing really well now uh, for the past two weeks, and uh, he seems to be carrying that his role pretty well. Um, but yeah, that's all. My all you got to do is throw the ball to him, man. 11 targets, 11 receptions, 84 yards. He's always been a great catcher of the football. And I feel like that's only going to benefit a player like Justin Herbert. And I don't know if you saw the Justin Herbert third down stats, but it was like 18 for 20. So first of all, 20 throws on third down. That's obviously not a good game script. He's a rookie quarterback. Uh, Like what else are you going to expect? He's not going to be on those positive game scripts. Lots of third downs, but 18 for 20, one touchdown, no picks. I mean, I'd say that was a pretty good day on third down at least. I'm interested to watch Justin Herbert in the future because I was super down on him, and he he kind of shocked me. And on, on the Panthers' side, first week, week one against the Raiders, they played a really tough game, lost by three points, I believe, in a shootout. Now this week against the, the Chargers, they actually win. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to say I was wrong about the Chargers, but uh, or rather the Panthers. But it, it's interesting that they're sort of getting the job done and doing slightly better than I think most people and probably even their fans had, like the expectations the fans had for them. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, next game, Bucks Broncos. Not much to talk about. I think uh, we all expected Tom Brady and the Bucks to handle their business against the Drew Lockless. Uh, the Broncos team. Um, I would Chris wanted, Godwin getting hurt though again. Yeah, I that's, believe. That's, he's out that for a while. He is now. out. He's going to be out apparently for multiple weeks. Philip Lindsay's back at practice. Uh, hopefully, he can play this upcoming week for Denver. 
Uh, Drew Locke has benched Jeff Driscoll, and now they're going with uh, Ripien uh, as their new QB. Um, we'll see how that goes. Dude, I feel bad for them. This is supposed to be their year, starting off 0 3. There's not a great start to the Vic Vangio era with your supposed high flying offense. The well, injuries also, have taken its toll, man. Without Drew Locke, man. It's without rough. Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton, who me and you have both been on record saying he's the best, one of the best wide receivers in the AFC, actually. It's just a rough Locke, year for them. It's, it's rough. You can't, you can't, you can only state that enough. It's rough. Um, I feel like they were definitely the team that, even without injuries, they're probably overhyped too much. Like, I saw some people saying they're going, like, like, I don't know if you know who Zach Schaumler is, Strong Opinion Sports. He's the host there. He said they'd go 11 and 5 as his prediction. I didn't see that at all. And I know injuries are obviously going to take a toll, but I feel like they were the team that was overhyped like one year earlier. Like, we always have one team every year. Like, the Browns, like, last year, they were extremely hyped up. And previously, we've always had, like, teams that are hyped up, like, a year too early. And I feel like that was – the Broncos were this year's team. Yeah, I feel you. Um, now, uh, the next game, Browns versus the football team. I, I didn't think there's not much talk about. Just feed Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, and the Browns will be in great hands. Uh yeah. Baker just needs to play efficient to win against these defenses. Like if they can't stop the run, just run it down their throat and then play play some play actions, some bootlegs, take some shots here and there, and you'll probably have a successful day. First winning yeah. record for the Browns in since 2014, by the way. So big props to them against winning against bad teams that they should probably win against. Yeah, uh, I also read a report uh, the other day that Ron Rivera is getting tired of Dwayne Haskins. Uh, He's saying the team deserves better. Uh, I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, they do have great – they do have good QBs on the bench, like uh, Alex Smith is there. But um, I don't know if – that's a great way to motivate him (laughs) by any means. But, I mean, it, it is what it is. Two picks, three, two t- TDs, three picks, two twenty-four yards. I don't know if that's not a good game for him at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, next game, uh, Raiders Pats. I was high on the Raiders. I had them. If you didn't listen to the last podcast, I had them as a top ten team, uh, right above New England, and they played like it the first half, um, and uh, they suddenly disappeared uh, in the second half. Cam Newton, Sony, Mich- Rex Burkhead, I think, was the main star of of this game for the Pats. Three and, touchdowns, uh, I believe. Yeah, on the offensive side. And defensively, the the Pats came to play. Um, but, yeah, great performance by New England and uh, performance that we'll see if they now finally make it into my top ten. Uh, we really thought New England wouldn't be a team this year. Like, some people really thought – like, I still had them, like, I think on the playoff picture, like, borderline. But – some impressive games, man. Almost beating Seattle in Seattle, beating the Raiders here. I think we all might have doubted. Yeah, them. we had we, we had them on the brink of making it, I don't, mm-hmm. and if not seven seed, I, we it was one of those two options. And now uh, they look like the, they may even take this division. But the Bills have uh, something to say about that, and we're going to talk about them next. That Rams Bills game. Uh, an amazing game to, to see. That was something uh, else, the, dude. <laughs> yeah, the first the first half was garbage. The second half, the third quarter was also garbage. It, it was the way uh, the Rams came back. The I, I mean, they were down twenty eight to three, and the Falcons memes were coming out of changing the uh, the Rams logo to the Falcons logo. I mean, I mean the Bills logo to the Falcons logo. But I mean, it, hey, it all worked out at the end of the day. Uh, I saw people saying that the con- there was a controversy in the PI call uh, at the- towards the end of the game. I don't know if you had the chance to look at that, Arib. Uh, what are your thoughts on that play? Um, dude, just suck it up, man. I mean, you're the Rams. You've won all- you-, you made it to the Super Bowl off a PI call. You made exactly. it. Like, you won week one against the Cowboys on a PI call. Like, yeah y- – it was probably not – it was probably like a 50-50 play. I don't – I, like, vaguely remember the play in the back of my head. I don't really have it, like, you know, right off, top, right off the top of my head right now. 
But like from what I remember, I wasn't like, this is an atrocious call. And if it was atrocious, I'm sure we would have seen many Rams fans like raging about it. And I just didn't see that. And Good grid, yeah. And just overall, okay, first of all, Josh Allen, like the stat line probably doesn't get do him justice. First of all, they're up 28 to three because he was balling out, man. Extremely balling out, five total touchdowns. And then when even when they start, like sort of started choking, he came back and made the game-winning drive after they blew the lead. Like that's some clutch gene type of stuff. Josh Allen, I want to watch him. Like I haven't really like tuned in. Like I, I watched a bit of that game, but it was just boring. It was the first half, and I was like, I don't feel like watching this. And instead of watching my Eagles tie with the Bengals, I probably should have watched this game because I think this would have been just an extremely – an extremely like insightful look into Josh Allen and who he's become as a player because he's using his feet to make plays. You're seeing he's throwing accurately. He has fast players like John Brown didn't even catch a pass this week and they're still popping off. Stephon Diggs only had 49 yards, less than 50 yards. Like the team is just playing at a high level offensively and they're so good defensively where it's just like they can hold their, like, hold their opponents to, really like bad performances and it, it's just this team is built extremely well and I wasn't expecting Sean McDermott and the like this team to go start off 3-0 at least not this hot like maybe they go 3-0 but you know they're winning like 21-17 games but here they are winning shootouts where they blow games and come back and win it last second and they're putting up massive amounts of points I'm impressed with the Bills yeah, man, I think you just summed up all my thoughts here. On the Rams side, though, I'm impressed. Uh, I mean, the Rams find a new running back, bro, like every week, man. It was Malcolm Brown. It was Cam, Cam Akers. It was Cam Akers, Malcolm Brown, and now Daryl Henderson. Uh, Daryl Henderson killed it, 28 carries for 114 yards. Um, Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup's doing his thing as usual. Goff playing his typical Goff game. I can't really uh, say anything else about that other than that. Um, but, yeah, overall, the Rams' defense stepped up. They had a great run in that second half. but uh, I mean, they almost yeah, won the, the game. The Bills uh, just proved they were the better team that day. And they were. They were a better team for three out of the four quarters. Um, it, it just so happened to go the, the Rams' way. Um, Sean McVay, man. Sean McVay. The way he yeah. schemes his players into great positions. Like you watch them and every single throw to every single throw that Jared Goff throws, easy throw. But it's going off for like, you know, 10, 15 yards, whether it be like Robert Woods on some nonsense screen, which looks like it shouldn't work, but it always does. Or when it comes to scheming up his running back, like you see, you can look at the stats on my screen here. Malcolm Brown, seven carries, 19 yards. He saw that wasn't working. Guess what he did? He filled, he fed the hot hand, Daryl Henderson, 20 carries, 114 yards. He doesn't sort of like, he doesn't sort of force things. Like he just lets it happen as it's happening. Like he's not going to force, like if Malcolm Brown's having an off day, okay, he's having an off day. We'll feed the player who's doing well you know, not forcing a square peg into a round hole, whatever that saying is. I'm just really liking the scheme. Like I saw them last week where they blew out my Eagles. Every single throw, it's like, where's the defense? And you're like, I don't know. There's just great scheming by Sean McVay. I feel like we were hating on Sean McVay earlier this year and, or, or rather last year. And I can say, I, I'm going to accept I was wrong. Maybe Sean McVay actually proved everyone wrong. And I know they lost this game, but similar to like the Bills game, this is sort of like a win-win situation where they played a great team and they were in it, man. They were in it by literally three points. They had the lead with like two minutes left to go. Just round of applause to both teams here. Great football game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, amazing game to watch. Um, I want to talk about a game that, one it was a, a nail biter throughout the entire time, not the entire time, towards the fourth quarter. The Bears Falcons game, lots to talk about about this game, man. This game is this game is probably the most annoying game. I, would, I mean, you're gonna say <laughs> obviously another game isn't more annoying than this, but this game was just on another level of annoying, man. How can you 
like the Falcon. Okay, so to give you guys a background, the Falcons were were up uh, twenty six. They were up, I believe, they were up twenty one points, something like up, that. They were up by sixteen. They were up by sixteen. That's what they were up by. Uh, I believe they were up twenty six to eight. That was the score. They were up twenty six to eight, uh, and I don't know what happened. I don't think the I don't think the Falcons know what happened either. Twenty six to ten, they were up twenty six to ten. That and uh, the fourth quarter, and then they bench they bench uh, Trubisky in the in the first half. At the end first of, the first of all, half. can we have a can we just have a moment of silence for the Mitch Trubisky era? Like, yep, we're gonna we're gonna be silent for about another like a good twenty seconds. now. That's too long. Um, <laughs> he doesn't deserve that much silence. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, I agree. though, man, I, I've, I've wanted him to succeed. Like, I know even, like, on our podcast page, like, the description talks is, like, whatever it says. It says something along the lines of two guys making fun of Mitch Trubisky a lot. I'm going to have to change it, unfortunately. I just hope wherever Mitch Trubisky goes, he finds success because I only want him to succeed, even if he is, like, the biggest meme in the football. But the real story here. Nick BD, Foles, yeah. man, BDN, BD. oh my God. He had like two overturned touchdowns. I remember watching one to Allen Robinson. I, I can't explain it, man. He that has the magic. Wasn't a pick. That pick wasn't a pick, man. That, that one interception was a touchdown that got overturned to a pick. Crazy. Mm, yeah, no, it was a uh, great play by the defender. I will give it to him. I forget who it was, but whoever it yeah. was just, it was, an Alan, it was an Al Robinson touchdown. I know that. Yeah. And, Dark was uh, Denard came up with the pick. I also believe he ended up getting hurt later in the game. So, you know, prayers up to him. But Nick Falls, dude, comes in three back to back touchdowns, takes the lead, wins the game for the Bears, who are now three and zero. First of all, I don't think anyone saw them going three and zero. I don't think you did. I know you were a bit higher on the Bears than I was. I had the Bears. I think as the last team in the division. Here they are, 3-0, tied with the Packers for the NFC West lead. All I can say is BDN, man. Like, no one else really did well fall. except other than Allen Robinson <laughs> on mm-hmm. the offensive side. The defensive side of the ball, they're going to do their things, man. I mean, you're going to see all – like, Akeem Hicks had a game. I remember seeing multiple plays where he had great pressure. Khalil Mack, you know, he's going to do his thing as well, even if he's not putting up the sack numbers. Just – I can't explain it. The, the BDN energy just flows through the entire team. And on the Falcon side, dude, oh, my Lord, fire Dane Quinn. That's all I can say. Because first time ever in NFL history where there's been two, I think, two 14-plus point, uh, 14 or po- uh, 14 point or greater leads blown in the fourth quarter, back-to-back games ever in history. Dan Quinn, wh- where's the rally? And I said it again. Where does this defense disappear to every single week? Like, I get it, you're injured. But at a certain point, you're a defensive head coach. You brought in because you had all those great years back with Seattle where you won a Super Bowl with them, and you had this great 3-4 defense. Like, what are you doing? Where does this defense disappear to every single day? Keanu Neal is playing. I, I don't care if he's hurt. I don't even know if he is hurt. But Keanu Neal is playing. Grady Jarrett playing, Marlon Davidson playing. De, uh, I think his name's Damon KZ. I'm forgetting his name. KZ, the safety, also playing. You have pretty solid young corners, I feel, and Isaiah Oliver. Like every single week, I feel like you're playing great. You're playing great. You're playing great. And then the heart for this team just disappears. And you're like, where did it go? Like, what is going on? Dan Quinn doesn't deserve to have a job anymore, in my opinion. Just I get like blowing into the Super Bowl. Okay, fine. Like, it's a big game. Like, you shouldn't have done it. You're Shanahan a meme for it. <laughs> like, you, I, I blame that more on Shanahan, right? Like, eventually, Brady's passing game, he ran like double the plays the Falcons ran. Like, the defense is going to get tired. Bound to happen, right? But here, it, and it's every single year they have games like this where they choke. And this year, back to back out of their first three games, they've lost two of them by just choking the lead away. Just unacceptable football. The heart of this team is non-existent. Like Matt Ryan, 19 for 38. He was facing the Bears defense, but I still can't give you a pass. You're a veteran quarterback. Try to rally the troops. I get it. Julio Jones missed a game. He didn't play. And and Calvin Ridley, just 
quick pause. Calvin Ridley, he's the only guy on offense who I think is playing with real heart. Maybe other than like, I mean, you could say Matt Ryan has heart, but like Calvin Ridley is really the only baller on this team. Like Todd Gurley is playing decent, but it's just the heart, man. I don't see it when I watch this Ram, this Falcons team rather in the fourth quarter. It, it just disappears like some 28, 2017 Warriors type stuff, man. Like I don't get it. Yeah, this it's 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 quite disappointing. Uh, great, great, uh, great analysis. Um, I do want to mind blowing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to mention Jimmy Graham. Uh, came to play. Nah, six receptions, uh, sixty yards, and two TDs. Uh, my man's trying to go back to where he was in uh, New Orleans. I I like what I saw from him, and I didn't like the fact that Trubisky got benched because. I didn't. He did throw a really bad pick. I'm not gonna lie, but when he ran that 45 yard rush, uh, I thought for sure like that would motivate the offense, and they were still in the game. Uh, just he got benched in, in the start of the third quarter, I believe, uh, and it it was clearly. I mean, I, I'm still. I still don't really understand the call for it, but clearly it's the right call. I mean, but. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that, that uh, benching idea. It goes to show that they believed that Foles was the guy the whole time, but they wanted to oh, – yeah. They wanted to – I heard all to... the theories. The one theory that I really strongly believed was the one that they wanted to give Trubisky that, you know, the option to play, give him the opportunity to play. And but Foles was if the he plays, player. And, yeah, and... so, like, you're not benching Trubisky just for the hell of benching him. You're benching him because – he was he wasn't the best player like it, it makes sense like they're really only starting trubisky like if he plays great great you got you got a great friend i'll be honest if they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if they if they lost any of the last two games if they lost week one or week two i think falls would have started the next week i think oh, they, yeah. they, they I think definitely so. ran it they definitely ran it on a game by game basis they, they were waiting for him to fail and they wanted to have you know they wanted to give him one last opportunity to prove himself and all it took was one mistake, and it's been one mistake too many for his career. Trubisky, man, I feel like hopefully, he's great on his feet. He's just bad at reading defenses, and you can't have that in the NFL, frankly. So I hope he can work on that mental game a little bit more. And Hopefully he can turn hopefully. into like a, like a Ryan Tannehill. Uh, bounce back from this. You were a starting quarterback. Then you, are, you went out on the market. No team really picked you up. Uh, for quite some time, then they pick you up, and then you get the opportunity to become a starter again, and then you take the grab the grab the reins and uh, take over. I hope a situation like that occurs for him because I, I truly do. scenery might be what he needs, man. Like he's gotten all these memes. Like you can't Apparently, tell me this man isn't like hasn't seen all the memes about him. Like I, I was watching, I was watching first take the other day. So Trubisky got the Bears shit up from three to two. The third pick mm-hmm. is the second pick to drop Trubisky. They Trubisky give up a ton went, as well. Trub, yeah, Trubisky get, uh, went to a Bulls game, his first Bulls game, right? Because he, he's a Bears player. They wanted to introduce him to the town and everything. So he went to a Bulls game, right? When he was on the big screen, everyone in the United Center booed for him when he, when he was at the game. And even from the time he stepped down into local Chicago grounds, the support wasn't there for him. And I guarantee you it must have gotten into his head that I don't know if this is the right place for me. And he has the pressure and the expectations to follow. And uh, clearly the pressure got the better of him in the, in the situation. So uh, Only yeah. hope he can b- bounce back, man. And we're seeing pressure with a different type of quarterback. I think it's time to talk about the Eagles game and, and, All of and the unfortunate All of tie. Okay, so – Carson Wentz, first interception. First of all, it's just a bad play design. Like I, I don't like the throw. He had to make that throw. That's the hot read. Like that's what that's where you're throwing it to. It would have been a tight fit no matter what. But, but that's besides the point. Tipped gets picked off. Like literally the first drive. His second pick, horrible pick, extremely horrible man. Just flat out. Just 
he was it was a fade route essentially to Zach Hurst on the right sideline. He threw it to the inside shoulder while the defender could get it. Fifth year quarterback, you can't be doing that type of stuff. But here's the problem, dude, with the Eagles. I honestly feel like they've let down Wentz. And this starts, first of all, with Harry Roseman. He made a big deal about getting these wide receivers, getting the speed, getting these great playmakers on the outside. Instead, he keeps Alshon Jeffrey. He keeps Deshaun Jackson. Like, I get Deshaun Jackson had a great first game, but you got to bring in some other veteran. I know Marquis Goodwin, we traded for him, and he opted out. But that can't be your only moves. You're relying on one guy who he had a shoulder injury in the Super, Super Bowl year. He's been injured throughout his entire career, even trending back to the Bears days. And you're looking at someone, when you look at Deshaun Jackson, consistently has been missing games the last few years of his career. And last year, he missed essentially like 14 and a half games. What are you doing here? Like, you can't have your number one wide receiver be Greg Ward consistently and hoping that pays off. John Hightower, um, like, he, he's a fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick. Quez Watkins, who's just being brought, uh, brought up from practice squad, another fifth, sixth-round pick. So, essentially, your only really in, really strong investment into this wide receiver core was Jalen Ragor. And I'm high on Jalen Ragor, as people know. I think he's going to be a great player. I know Justin Jefferson won off last week with the Vikings and everyone's talking about how we should have drafted him. I still think it's too early to judge Jalen Rager, and it's one game for Jefferson, and I think Rager probably fits what we need more. But where's the wide receiver talent for Wentz? I don't see it anywhere. Like You're just dependent on these guys who can't separate. Greg Ward is a slot wide receiver. He's, he's decent at route running, but you're, you don't want him to be your outside wide receiver. And going into this week, our wide receivers look like they're going to be Greg Ward, Deontay Burnett, who's another practice squad guy drafted in like the seventh round, sixth round. Drafted by the Jets, I believe, a few years ago. John Hightower, drafted this year, a rookie. That's not like a starting caliber wide receiver core. And I know that the guys who were commentating the game, they were just talking about how Wentz needs to find a guy to pass it to. Like the entire game, they're like, I I don't think you watch the game on ball, but the entire game, they're like, so who's Wentz's target going to be here? Because we know that the Bengals are just going to double team Ertz and without Goddard in the game, who, who also got hurt, he's going to miss a few games with a fractured ankle, I believe. Without Goddard in the game, all we had to do was double cover Ertz, and one of these guys is going to have to beat you, and they're not going to be able to. Just a systematic failing for Howie Roseman when it comes to failing of Carson Wentz. J.J. Ortega Whiteside drafted him above D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown. So many good wide receivers that were taken before him last year in the 2019 draft, or taken after him, rather, who just did have done leaps and bounds more than what he has done. He's done nothing in his career. Zero catches going to his three games. He has some phantom injury again this year that he's dealing with. I don't care, man. You're getting on the field. You're a second round pick. Go produce. But Howie Roseman, what are you doing? Why did you pick this guy if he's just not going to produce? You prioritized him over DK Metcalf because DK Metcalf ran a slower three cone drill. Like, I, I don't know what you're going to say about that. And from the coaching perspective, 47 throws. I think I had a stat about Carson Wentz. It might have been two weeks ago or last week. It was something like, I'm forgetting the number off the top of my head, but he's extremely bad. I think it's like he has like eight wins or something like that off the top of my head where he's throwing like for 40 passes or more in a game. 47 attempts here. The, the, did we watch the Bengals game last week? I get it. The Bengals probably made some adjustments. But guess what was working in the, the first half of the game? The run game was working. Miles Sanders, only 18 carries. Like, that's just bonkers to me. When you saw what the, the Browns did on Thursday Night Football, they ran all over them with Kareem Hunt, all over them with Nick Chubb. It was just, it was just a field day for these guys. And instead, Doug Peterson just turns away from, from the run for no reason. And also, Doug Peterson, what are these stupid tight end screens to Zach Ertz, like three yards behind the line of scrimmage? These stupid screens to Greg Ward, who I love Greg Ward. He's not the fastest guy on our team. Why are we throwing screens to them behind the line of scrimmage? Zach Ertz, he's slow. Like, he's a great possession catch. He's going to make those tough catches for you. He's going to make those touchdown grabs. You're not looking for him to, for, to make rack, bro. You're not looking for yards after contact for him, yards after catch. That's not his game. Just overall, 
first of all, the defense played phenomenally. Eight sacks. This defensive line is going to be special. Even Javon Hargrave hasn't been fully healthy, and the team is just going off. Josh, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham having great games. You know, obviously you have the GOAT. Well, not really the GOAT, but one of the best defensive tackles I've ever seen in Fletcher Cox getting a sack. Jalen Mills playing decent safety. He has a few blown coverages here and there, but it's his first year playing safety. Overall, I'm liking him filling into the Malcolm role. I think he's filling in decently well. So defense, to me, isn't a huge problem. But I feel like systematically, the like systemically, the system and the Eagles have failed Carson Wentz. He needs to play better. And believe me, I know this guy wants to win because I saw him make plays with his legs. I saw him drop dimes in overtime that was Zach Ertz. And you're like, where have those throws been? He wants to win. He has that motivation. He's not rolling over and dying. He's not – like people are saying he has confidence, confidence issues. Well, he probably does because all he hears are jail – like if, I'm pretty sure if he scores through his Instagram comments, it's just going to be bench you for Jalen Hurts, bench you for Jalen Hurts. You suck. Why are you our quarterback? And that's obviously not great for like a quarterback mental wise, but like I can see he wants to win. I can see he has that in him. Like he played good in that last probably 15, 20 minutes or whatever. He, he played as good as he probably could have played. And for Doug Peterson to in overtime, for those of you who didn't watch the game, we essentially had a chance to kick a 64 yarder game winning uh, field goal with 19 seconds left. Um, or go for the Hail Mary. Instead, we just played for the tie. And, like, as a head coach, your job is to go out there and win games, not tie games. Just overall, Wentz needs to play better, but I know he wants to play better. I know he has it in him. And I know he's not rolling over and dying. But everyone else, especially Doug and Howie, just I'm disappointed, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, man. Uh, great. Uh, once again, uh, great analysis. Uh, I think you've hit on everything that I wanted to hit on. And I wanted to tie into what you were saying with the idea of that you, you play to win the games, man. You don't, if, if it's a tie game, this was Frank Reich's mentality. This was his first year as a coach. Uh, I, we, were, we were on a pod, I think, last year talking about this around this time. The Colts lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, they lost them this year. They lost to them last year too. But anyways, they lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars because they would believe it was a fourth and two, and the Colts were on their own. Uh, they were on their own like forty yard line, and you you think why 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 you definitely go for it, man. You don't play. Mm-hmm. You, you, there's not a chance that in hell that you can't you can't risk these. Uh, you it's worth taking the risk. Honestly, a tie looks ugly on your on your record. It, it really does. And if you tie, especially yeah, like for example the Jags, and even now the Bengals, it, like take the loss, move on from it. it. It is what it is, right? The Eagles lost to the Dolphins last year. It, it's just, it can't be worse than that. And now, like it, it, it was, it didn't make any sense. Either kick the damn field goal, trust the kicker that okay, maybe we'll we'll live or die with this result. That's fine. But the idea that they didn't even want to kick it even after that. They want the they want they went to the delay of game penalty. Like, come on, man! Uh, it didn't make any sense what uh, what uh, Doug Peterson was doing. And you're giving the Bengals game. the ball with like 25 yards to go, no timeouts, and, and they wouldn't do probably that. like 14, that 13 play. seconds left. And they weren't even doing that in the fourth quarter. They got the ball back. They didn't do anything with it. And where is the threat, dude? Where is the trust in our defense? I don't know if you watched that fourth quarter, or the overtime. Their I defense did, did. stopped Joe Burrow and this offense four, exactly. three times in a row in overtime. Where is the faith on the defense? Like, it didn't make any uh, sense. Doug Peterson, any we time. pay you to win games. I'm still a Doug guy, but I'm slowly falling off, man. Like, if I see another one of these stupid bullshit screens, I'm probably going to lose my mind. Dude, and it didn't, it, it was on a. It, Dude, I, before the season, by the way, I have Doug Peterson as probably one of the best coaches in the NFL. As probably, did I. Probably top six, top five even. Because, like, he, he's, a, he's structurally a great coach. I mean, offensively, defensive-minded. Everything worked with him. All of a sudden, he's running these, uh, these plays that didn't make any sense. These tight end screens just be like, what the hell – what, what what am I watching here? No, run those with Goddard. Goddard runs those extremely yeah, well. Goddard's he's a faster out. guy, but he's out. So why would he throw it to Ertz? 
he's out. That's the point. He's out. He has he's he he had one reception, seven yards, gone. He didn't get targeted at any more times, right? Ertz, like you said, Ertz is like miles slower than him, man. Come on. And John Hightower, the, 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 it's shame on him, man, for not picking up receivers in the, oh, in the free agency. They have John, High, they have John Hightower, Burnett. Richard Rodgers, he was a third-string tight end for Green Bay, bro. And, and caught more passes than J. Jaw has caught in the entire year. And, and then he's J. J. receiver. What? Why is he even? Why is he even on the team, man? They drafted this dude in the second round to not play. It's different if he has an in. He's he he was literally in the game. He didn't make any plays. Like nah, dude, literally. you're wrong. He had a great block on a run play to the right. I believe it was like their own ten yard line. Great block there by JJ Ortega Whiteside. Like my little brother did just as much as JJ Ortega Whiteside that game, and he didn't, like it, it, I I can't get over the fact. That the Eagles literally tied with the Bengals. I picked the Bengals to win this game, by the way. And I said that just so I would be wrong. I literally picked this game so I could be wrong. Because I thought the Eagles would run miles over them because it would be a running game. And Wentz was running the running them down. Are you serious? Wentz had 65 yards rushing and a touchdown. Uh, he was arguably the best performing rushing player on that team. And you can't you can't be serious, man. They stopped they shut down Mixon. I thought Mixon would be the biggest biggest problem with this Bengals offense. And he wasn't even the biggest problem. They got burned by T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, man. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And I'm high on T. Higgins, you're high on T. Higgins. As am I. So, but he had a good game, like, man. But bro, like you can't I can't I can't accept this, man. And I I I I'm nowhere near blaming did this on the Eagles' uh, defense as much as the Eagles' offense. Eagles' offense is definitely the reason why the Eagles are losing these games. Uh, Jalen Hurts, that Jalen Hurts pick still doesn't make sense. Uh, and it never will make sense, honestly, unless unless he does overtake Wentz. And if that was the case, you should have just picked the QB in the first round. You shouldn't have done it in the second round. Uh, you don't pick a, a guy to take over in the second round. Uh, so... Yeah, awful. I'm ready to move on from this one, man. Just depression, pain. That's all yeah, I feel. A and, I and honestly, it, I dude, a tie. A tie honestly, a the most annoying part is that we have to read O blank and one every single game now from now exactly. on for two of these exactly. teams. You'd That's rather, the most painful you'd rather just thing. Lose. I would rather just lose. It, it, it's I, I heard. I don't know if you know who Ellie Shore Park is. Shore Shore Parks yeah, is. Do, he's I like do, he's do. a beat writer, yeah. for, beat writer for the Eagles. His yeah. proposal is that a tie should be a loss for both the teams. And I know, like, like just fundamentally, like, record-wise, that just doesn't, doesn't work make, out. It doesn't, it doesn't work sense, out because yeah. you're going to end up having, like, weird records, right? It doesn't make sense. But it feels like a loss for both teams, and it feels like a loss for fans. So that, that's just my take on it. Um, yeah. Um, moving on, uh, we'll go to the Texans-Steelers game. Uh, this was yeah. a great game. Uh, Texans trying to prevent themselves from going 0-3. Unfortunately, they failed. But it's not I – I think Watson played okay. Uh, the problem with the Titans – the Texans, my bad, are there, is their O-line, bro. I said this in the beginning. You, you paid too much for Laramie Tunsil, man. Uh, people thought he was like – it's like they paid like he's like Khalil Mack, bro. It, they paid two first-round picks for him, and then now he's like getting 20 mil a year. He, he's doing – that entire O-line, not just him, but that entire O-line is doing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, he's still getting sacked a lot. Um, poor guy. And two sixty four, two TDs. That one pick wasn't even his fault, arguably. Uh, yeah, David Johnson. What a what a great game that you had, man. Thirteen carries, twenty three. Hey, yards. dude, gr- great offensive line there to open up pause for him. Deshaun exactly. Watson. Exactly. I saw him make good throws, by the way. Yeah, like, exactly. He's playing. Random Cobbs are well. Uh, Ryan Cobb. Where's Brandon Cooks, man? That's what I'm saying. The real question is, where is DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, that's – that's yeah. Um, do you remember – what team did Hopkins play for before the Cardinals? I don't remember. I think he played for either – I think it was a Texas team. I want to say it was either Dallas or 
it, it could have been Houston. Oh shoot, you're right. It was Houston, bro. Oh my god. And they were really lacking. Brian's a great coach, but god damn, man, they lost out big time. They could have survived with any running back, bro. If the Rams are surviving off three running backs, three different running backs, the 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 Texans could definitely survive off of any running back. David Johnson doesn't need. He's not. Dude, they had Carlos Hyde last year, and Carlos Hyde played decently. And now he's getting. He's gonna get touches here with Seattle. It doesn't make any sense. And. Yeah, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I feel bad Just for Deshaun. Mind-boggling, bro. Big Ben it. playing another good game. James Conner, good game. Just overall, like, the Steelers Everyone, team, like, they, like, their offense. Okay, first of all, the Steelers, I feel like they high QB playing down to their competition a ton. You, like, yeah, you said that games, I and talked about it. It's been a thing for Mike Tomlin's entire career. It's why people call them overrated. I still think he's a great coach, but he has games like this where he just – like, it's inexplicable. Like, they just come out unprepared and don't play good. And this Texans team, I think, had a lead for a decent amount of time as well. But they came out, Talon ended up winning in the end, and they ended up clutching it up and winning that game pretty uh, solidly for seven points. Just overall, Big Ben really is the key that they needed in order to be successful last year. And I feel like, dude, last year their defensive talent was even better than what it is right now. Like, just think about that. Like, if they had a functioning offense last year, like, they could have literally beaten the Chiefs. That's crazy. It's still crazy to think about. Um, yeah, for, uh, Mike Tomlin's a great coach, and he's always has been. Uh, Titans-Vikings, this game was uh, going down to the wire. I mean, shame on the shame on the Vikings for starting 0-3, man. Obviously, you shouldn't be – the panic should not be, like, extremely panicked. Because, I mean, the Vikings are still a great team. I expect them to bounce back. Uh, but come on, bro. Come on, bro. The t- you can't lose to the Titans. The Derrick Henry rushing stat continues, man. He's yeah. undefeated with uh, after running for 100 yards. That's crazy, man. Who is this Raymond dude? Who is he? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> I, I, we didn't, we've never done one analysis of this guy, Khalif Raymond. I've not heard of him. I literally have not heard of him. And he burned uh, – I forget who he burned. Uh, for the, we're talking about the receiver for the Titans. Khalif Raymond, as you can see, his stat line, 118 yards, three for three. Had a great route. Justin Jefferson, I hit on him earlier in the show when I was talking about the Eagles. Seven catches, 175 yards, one touchdown. His breakout comes out. Dalvin Cook, again, breakout. Dalvin like, this a was, bad this, man. He's a bad man. Like a sh- <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, it's just overall, <sighs> Kirk Cousins has got to play better. I know he's thrown two picks, threw three touchdowns, but two picks, unacceptable for him. Back-to-back back bad games, yeah. For a team that, like, prides themselves on being a defensive head coach, Mike Zimmer, defensive head coach, you know, running all these A-gap, A-gap blitzes and all these creative looks. I know they lost a couple of players. They lost Anthony Barr. I don't. I think Daniel Hunter might be eligible to return next week, week four. Yep. yep. Um. Obviously, they lost a ton of corners. It's, it's a, they lost Limbo Joseph. Like it's a lot of new players everywhere. Everson Griffin as well being gone. So I guess that might be it. I don't know, man. Mike Zimmer. Hopefully, he fixes the issue because I know you were high on the Vikings. I never really particularly was, but like I want to see some Very fun high. Viking football. Yeah. Yeah, I was top 10 high, man. Uh, I was at a time top six high. Uh, they're not playing like it right now, for sure. Uh, next game I want to talk about is the Lions. Giants. We, we just did. Uh, we already talked about it. Oh, wait. No, we did not. Uh, well, there isn't much to talk about, dude. Just the yeah. Niners. First of all, I think the only one thing that's worth noting here, Kyle Shanahan is so good. It doesn't matter who his quarterback is, who his running back is. He's going to scheme players up for oh, plays up for his oh, players. Oh, oh, oh. He got money. Damn. 343 and a TD. I'll take that. Damn. And they're using Brandon IU creatively. He took handoffs back in college, got his first touchdown. Took he, like, it's just creative play calling, man. Like they're doing what they did with Debo Samuel with Brandon Ayuk. And when Debo Samuel comes back, you're pretty much going to have two identical players who are great at, like pretty well rounded at everything as gadget players who do everything. Like, it's just going to be 
just the offense. This is what yeah. great offensive play callers do. Even when, like, their team gets hurt, they're still going to put up points because they know how to scheme players open. They know how to play to their, to their strengths. And that's just something that's admirable. And really, that's the only, th- only thing worth noting for that game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Lions-Cardinals would be my, my next game. Uh, dude, I think they heard Arians rant on the Lions. They clearly don't want to tank because uh, they they balled with Kenny Galladay finally in the lineup. He was a no-show in the first half, though, but that's fine. Uh, they balled with – they balled uh, – Matt Stafford did well. Adrian Peterson, he's going to keep playing. That's perfectly fine with me. Uh, carry on Johnson got almost no carries, not a big deal, because uh, Adrian Peterson did his job. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm impressed. Kyler Murray, I, I I thought you have done a lot better. Three picks is a bit too much, bro. Three I mean, pucks, three pick. touchdowns though, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Akuda, I think. I yeah. I don't know if you saw the Instagram. I added I you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I did. From our friend Chase, another Lions fan. Shout out to Chase Adler if he is listening currently. Um, so Kyler Murray, three picks, just an off game, man. I, it's just one of those games. I, I will give props to Matt Patricia and his defense for actually doing something and picking off. I mean, I'd say Kyler is a top 10 quarterback, and they picked him off three times. Props to him for having some sort of a game plan and them not choking the game and actually winning it. And they sort of – I mean, they, they came back and won it in the end. I mean, honestly, they won it in the fourth quarter, held Kyler Murray in that ex- explosive offense. Like, DeAndre Hopkins still had 100 yards. Andy Isabella had two touchdowns, but they held them in check in the fourth quarter, zero points, three total picks. Shout out to uh, Matt Patricia for still being mediocre, but having at least a good game this year. Yeah. Uh, Car- yeah, Kyler Murray, I expected better from you, man. That's all I got to really say there. Um, America's game of the week, uh, Cowboys Seahawks. This was this game was closer than I. It, it was really a two score game. That DK Metcalf dude was being really stupid, man. Towards the end of that game, I, I he was being beyond stupid. I, I don't understand why he he thought he had it already. Uh, it didn't make any sense. Just That's drop fine. the ball on the goal line. Yeah. This, so for this, those this of you who really, didn't, yeah. yeah. For those of you who didn't watch the play. It was essentially a go route. He beat the corner, Trevon Diggs, the rookie, and he just caught it for the touchdown. And instead of, you know, running in the end zone like a normal player, he just sort of jogged in. And Trevon Diggs, shout out to him, man. I liked him out of Alabama coming out. Punched it out of the end zone, was a touchback. Stole Russell Wilson his sixth touchdown. Um, yeah, super stupid. So for the, for the Seahawks side, right, let Russ cook. Like, it's that simple. 40 passing attempts. I don't think Russell Wilson has thrown 40 passing passing attempts in his like entire career. Like I know that's a joke, but honestly, like when was the last time we've seen him do that? Usually it's like 25, 30 pass attempts. Like maybe he'll hit 35 like once a year. But here we see 40 passing attempts, five touchdowns. Literally the hottest pace ever to start like the first three games ever for an NFL player. And this is where we see the explosive wide receivers, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, even Greg Olson, who's like 72 years old, getting involved. Let Russ cook, man. Yeah, uh, I think that's the same thing I would have to say on the, on the Seahawks side. Um, but on the, on the Cowboys side, Dak Prescott was impressive, man. Uh, he had 472 yards. I mean, that's back-to-back uh, over 450-yard games. Uh, very impressive. Uh, I think Michael Gallup and S- Cedric Wilson, again, a name I wouldn't think I'd be seeing uh, in the stat sheet. He's been playing really well. Amari Cooper has not been playing to his worth. Uh, C.D. Lamb is a rookie, so uh, he, he played well. The thing is, though, Amal, even if Amari Cooper is not playing to his worth, they're so deep at wide receiver. Like you said, you wouldn't expect to see a Cedric Wilson on the sheet, but – Exactly. You are. Cedric Wilson, 100 yards. Like, and there are multiple teams that don't yeah. have a 100 yard receiver like this year and might not have one, period, this year. And he's like their fourth, fifth receiver and he's getting it done. Just props to the, uh, you know, props to Jerry Jones for seeing wide receiver talent and picking it up when he should have. Yeah. And on the defensive side, 
Trevon Diggs did have that great play on uh, on DK Metcalf, but overall he's been he was blowing a lot of coverage. I think uh, throughout the entire game. Uh, you never Tyler want to see Lockett. your corner leading you in tackles, leading them with nine tackles for the game. Exactly. Yeah, Ty- Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf were running circles around those guys. Uh, and that's the truth. You can see D- Tyler Lockett had three TDs for 100 yards, man. Uh, that's insane. Literally insane. Uh, yeah, I, and Russell Wilson, five TDs. Yeah, amazing game. Uh, the pass defense is worrisome, though, for the Cowboys, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. It, it is worrisome. I'm not completely worried because they are tied for in their division. So <laughs> One and two. Uh, Alvin I, Smith, though, three sacks. Dude, he's back, bro. He's back. He's back to his former glory, man. He, he's, he hasn't played in a while, but he is back. He's he's a he's a monster, uh, yeah, a uh, great player. Um, I want to go to, I believe it was the the Sunday night game, the Packers Saints. Uh, this game for me, uh, it w- it was great. I wish Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas could play, but unfortunately they were hurt with their respective injuries. So my takeaway from this game was. Let Aaron Rodgers cook. Simple. And Breeze did well, too. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, man, Aaron Rodgers is playing like he's that bad man. So, uh, with Alan Lazard, he killed it. He took over that Devontae Adams role. And that Packers defense also stood out to me, and they played pretty well as well. But my thing is they couldn't contain Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara was – Dude, I, he had that beast mode run. Did you see how many tackles he broke in that one run? I think he broke six tackles in that one run. 50-yard touchdown. It was yeah. literally like a, it was a dump off. Like the play had been going on for like four seconds. Breeze dumped it off behind the line of scrimmage for like, you know, two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Should have been tackled for like a five-yard gain. Ended up going for 60. And I know you could be worried about the Packers defense missing those tackles. But Alvin Kamara makes everyone miss those tackles. So exactly. Like, yeah. So it's not a big. It's not. It's not a major worry. Uh, dude, Alvin Kamara is putting up D hop numbers, bro. Thirteen reception, hundred and thirty nine yards, two TDs. Are you serious, man? He's filling that a uh, Michael Thomas void, dude. Oh my gosh, that is insane. That is impressive, man. I, his I highest scrimmage that. yard game in his career, I believe. I want to say had two touchdowns. So he had six, 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 uh, six carries for fifty-eight uh, yards is also really great impressive. efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Drew Brees, man. Um, he played a decent game, from what I remember. It's been a couple of days since the game. I let it sink in. But honestly, you can see who's the better quarterback, like missing their number one options. Aaron Rodgers still has the mobility, still has the arm. Drew Brees is like, I don't think I saw him throw the ball past maybe 15, 20 yards. Aaron Rodgers chucking up 50-yard, 40-yard bombs. And I think the Al Michaels took off a break for this game. I think he's getting ready to retire eventually. They're sort of starting to phase him out. But it was Chris, uh, Chris Collinsworth and Mike Tirico, and they're repeatedly talking about how the defense is all they had to do was make one play, like one key stand. And you saw the Packers defense making those stands. They're getting those sacks. They're doing stopping the run. And they did it at the end of the game to win the game. Just props to this Packers team. I am uh, – I don't want to jinx it, but my Packers prediction making the Super Bowl, which I predicted for the last five years, might actually happen this year. <laughs> and then the last game, what we all thought would be the game of the week, the the Chiefs Ravens game, uh, Lamar Jackson uh, was no show on pa- on, the, on the passing side, ninety seven yards in a touchdown, but he did play really well in the rushing. No, they could not stop the run from him. Eighty three yards rushing on nine attempts. Uh, but the main the main thing here I want to talk about is Patrick Mahomes, bro. He had four TDs in the first half, and then. You got a pity touchdown in the last in the last quarter <laughs> to put things away. They didn't they didn't need it, but hey, it helps. Uh, impressive game overall from Edwards Hilaire, from uh, Elair I should say Edwards Elair, um, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, all those guys killed it. Uh, McCall Hardman also played well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Sammy Watkins played well. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. Uh, every almost every player on the Chiefs receiving core did well. Yeah, and this is the Mahomes the game I wanted to see, honestly. Yeah, because everyone distributed from Watkins, Edward Elaire, Hill, Hardman, Kelsey. Those guys all got above 60 yards. That's- Dude, none of these guys are jump ball receivers either. Like maybe you can make argue. I mean, like obviously Travis Kelsey is he's second best tight end in the league, third best tight end, whatever you want to say. Sammy Watkins, yeah, he's had some great jump balls in his career, but like overall, like these guys are all speedsters. And when you have speed and you have a great offensive line and you have a guy who can move even the tiniest bit and Mahomes can move a good amount, like even if there's a broken play, you can't cover the speed for more than like four seconds on like crossing routes or, you know, sit downs, whatever it might be, deep routes. Like they, like Anthony Sherman and Eric Fisher – Anthony Sherman's the fullback, for those of you who don't know. Eric Fisher is literally an offensive lineman. These guys caught touchdowns. Like, first of all, innovative playing calling by one of the best coaches I've ever seen in Andy Reid. And second of all, just testament to how many offensive weapons they have where their fullback is getting touchdowns. Yeah, it, it's, it's insane. Um, and on, on the offensive side for the, Chiefs, for the Ravens, I should say on the Chiefs' defensive side especially, Mark Andrews was a no-show. He had eight targets, and the Chiefs shut him down completely. Three receptions for 22 yards. Uh, they, they Honey Badger, really, man. They really shut him down. I, I mean, yeah, I'd give them the props to that. And the running game did nothing uh, outside of Lamar Jackson. Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram, they only got – they should have ran the ball way more, in my opinion. Uh, but it is what it is. The game already happened. Uh, I expected the game to be way closer than what it was. 34-20. Yeah, it did. I mean, it was a one This is game. supposed to be the game of the year, man. And honestly, it let me down here. Yeah, it, it really did let me down. But, hey, man, the Chiefs are just a better team. Uh, and now we are going to move on to our, our power, power rankings. Our power rankings, yep. Yeah. So, uh, so um, we're going to look at top 10 teams, and then mm-hmm. we're going to, at the end, obviously discuss the three that we have right outside of the top 10. So, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll go I'll go first. Number one, I have the Chiefs. Yep, I do as well. I have the Chiefs at one impressive win over the Ravens. So yeah, I know I, you had the Ravens last week as your number one yep. team. You thought yep. they would win. Just test them into how great Patrick Mahomes is and how how much improvement Lamar Jackson still has to like go through. And that's testament to like how good of a player he is because he won MVP last year and he can still improve. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so who's your number two team? So my number two team is Seattle because of uh, their great win against Dallas and how Russell Wilson is just killing it. So, uh, yeah, impressive win. That's why they're my number two. Back You're to back stealing to my team. thing, man. Uh, Seattle, best quarterback in the league, at least the one who's playing the best right now by far. Um Honestly, their defense isn't doing really impressive things. Like, they've been in shootouts every single game. And, like, their defense is just making enough plays. But they're winning the shootouts because Russell Wilson's that good. I I can't really fault them for not having the the greatest defense because their quarterback is the best quarterback in the league. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Yeah, my three here – I'm going to put – I was between two teams. I was between the Packers and the Ravens. I'm going to lean the Ravens here at three because uh, they are – even though they did lose to Kansas City, they've been killing every other team. They've only lost to – they've only lost to uh, the Titans and the Browns outside of Kansas City in the past two years. So. Uh, I can't be I can't be that worried about them. Um, so that's why they're my three seed. I mean, they just ran into a better team. I'm right with you. I'm the Ravens at three. I believe you had the Packers at four then. Correct. I do have the Packers at yeah. four. Yeah. So Packers, a really impressive win, right? Like their defense made plays when they had to. Aaron Rodgers made great plays when they had to. But if I'm looking like Pound for pound, like if I'm making a boxing analogy, who's the best pound for pound boxer here? 
I, I think pound for pound, this roster on the Ravens is just better than the roster on the Packers. And I don't know if they're matching up anytime this year. I hope they are because I think that would be a phenomenal game. But like pound for pound, I think the Ravens roster is just slightly better. Though, like the Packers could also win any game, like if they wanted to. It's just you know a coin flip when it comes to like you know who's gonna win there. It's it's literally down to honestly when it comes to talent, it's whoever's the best quarterback. Like when it comes to how close those teams are talent wise. But I just think the Ravens have more than enough talent where they're like a better team overall, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, Number five, it's been the same since week one, Pittsburgh. Okay, Pittsburgh still. I have the Bills at five, and um, I'm looking – they jumped one spot for me last week. Um, dude, that win was impressive. I thought this week was the week they're going to lose. It has upset written all over it. You had the Rams who are great offensively going in. Like I can see the defense flopping and the Rams defense sort of holding Josh Allen and Josh Allen having a normal Josh Allen game. But instead, Josh Allen goes off, has his third back-to-back 300-yard game in his career after having zero his first two years. I'm just impressed with the Bills. Like, the Steelers, they play down to their competition, and I'm just seeing the Bills toast everyone they're playing. And I can't really knock them for that. Like, yeah, they're not facing the the greatest teams their first two weeks. But this week, man, against a great team, I think, in the Rams, they went went fist for fist, blow for blow, and they ended up winning. That's impressive for me. Yeah, man. Uh, My – the Bills for me, I mean, the the – don't get me wrong, the Bills look very impressive. I just think the Steelers overall have still proven to be a superior team just mm-hmm. right now, uh, mainly because I didn't like how the fact they blew the 28-3 to lead. Um, so that's why I have the Bills at six, same as where they had them last week. So my four through six have, has been the same. Uh, the four is the Green Bay Packers, five is the Pittsburgh Steelers, and six is the Buffalo Bills. Um, Still an impressive win, undefeated right now, uh, and a great win against the Rams. So, yeah, I have them at six. And my yeah. seven. Wait, my wait, seven, I got my number six. You, you can't oh, just yeah, skip yeah, me yeah, like yeah. that. My bad. My bad. Okay. My bad. So, the only one in two team to make this list. I had the Saints at six. and Oh, whoa, that's high. I, I know that's high, man. But I just I see it offensively. Like, the defense just has to make a few more plays. And I feel like it, when Michael Thomas comes back, I think we'll come back within the next couple of weeks. You're going to see this offense click more. And I don't know. It just seems like a rough start to the season, but they've played good teams, I feel like. Like the Raiders, yeah, they're not the best team, but it's a home opener in a new stadium in Las Vegas. Like, and the Raiders aren't the worst team. Like the Raiders are playing some solid football here. And Packers, you had them as a top four team. I had them as a top four team. I had them winning. We both had them winning that game, actually. And we just, it just happened. Like, the Saints' injury to Michael Thomas, I think, is huge for them. And I know it might be a bit high, but I just can't drop them after their, you know, their latest success over the last three, four seasons. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. You can go with number seven. Oh, I'll, I'll follow after that. Okay. So, I have the Steelers at number seven. Same as what I had them last week. I can't really drop them because they won the game. I think they're better teams than everyone below them. And I can't really raise them because, like I said, they sort of played down their competition against not the best Texans team. So I'm just going to leave them where they are. I think they're still a great team, but uh, it's just odd when they played out of their competition. Yeah, so my seventh here is a team that's finally entering into my top ten teams. Uh, and it is indeed the New England Patriots. And the New England Patriots have entered it for me because that was a very decisive win against the Las Vegas Raiders. I, they were the running by Sony Michelle, uh, J- Rex Burkhead. Yeah, and Cam Newton, he's playing out of his mind. So uh, he didn't play well necessarily in that, great, that game, but he's uh, that, that running game was insane and Derek Carr 
definitely felt the pressure from the uh, Pats D. So, uh, yeah, I like the Pats at seven. Yeah, I mean, his rush game adds a whole other dimension to their team. I had the Patriots at eight. Same reasons as you. I just think the Steelers are slightly, I want to say more impressive, but I just like their defense more. And talent-wise, I will give the edge to them, even though had they have the Patriots have the best coach in, in the league. Adding Cam Newton is just so underrated. It's such a Bill Belichick move, man. Like, I don't know how he sits out on free agency for like three months or whatever it was, unemployed. He gets, you know, he gets signed by the Pats. Literally revolutionizes their offense because – it opens up the rushing game. It opens up the passing game. And they don't have the best passing weapons. But Cam Newton does – like, he opens the offense up to the point where, like, yeah, here are only two really good receiving threats other than your running backs, Julian Edelman and Enkio Harry. And that's about it. But it just, he just opens it up for them. And it, it's just – how do you let someone sit on free agency for that long? Patriots, Bill Belichick, they're not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we were both, we were both high. We were both relatively. It's people had really low expectations. I mean, we had them as playoff contenders, and now they may. They're right now even looking above that. I think they look like playoff locks. Uh, the way they're playing right now. Um, my eight team is the one and the only one and two team I also have in this list, and that is the New Orleans Saints. Uh, so you have New Orleans Saints at six. The reason I have them below, like teams like the Patriots and uh, the Bills and the Steelers are because I think personally, quite frankly, they, they've been, uh, they've been struggling. Uh, Again, I mean, yeah, the Raiders, they should have beat the Raiders. That's the main problem that I had. And the fact that they're starting off uh, one and two, and they also, that too, they lost, I guess, in the Superdome. I mean, obviously home, 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 home field doesn't matter that much, but yeah, uh, it's the fact that they're one and two. I think that that really hurts me. Yeah, the 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 one loss was was a rough loss. They did beat Tampa in week one. That was an impressive win. But when they lost to uh, when they lost to Vegas and then now uh, Green Bay, um, that that means something to me. And I had them at eight last week, so they're not they're staying exactly the same. Uh, from where they are from last week to this week, because I didn't think I didn't think this loss was a major hit or uh, helping them. So yeah. Okay. So number nine, I have the Bucks. The last like they had a rough game week one against New Orleans, but the last two weeks they've gotten the job done against those teams that they should have gotten the job done against. And Tom Brady is starting to pick it up. I know Chris Godwin's going to be out, but their defense is playing well. Mike Evans is playing well. Uh, just overall, like, they aren't really doing anything flashy at the moment, but they're winning the games they should be winning, and I can't really fault them for that. And like I said, I was high on them going into the season, thought they would be a, a pretty good team. And I want to see what happens, like, later on in their schedule when they face, like, another great team like the Saints. And I want to see if we'll see, like, a new revitalized or rejuvenated Patriots team. Or Bucks yeah. team, rather. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. Um, so my ninth team is, uh, whether, believe it or not, they're still in my top 10. I have the Cardinals at nine and I'm still going to be on the Kyler bandwagon because I I think even though he did perform quite poorly, I think they should have won that game. And even though they didn't, they clearly didn't, but I think, uh, they're going to bounce back from it and they're going to show why they are a top 10 team and definitely a contender in the NFC West uh, and battle it, battle it out with uh, Seattle. So um, I'm going to keep them. They were at seven for me last week. They were at eight for me week one, at the end of week one. And uh, now they just bounce down to nine for me. Okay. So my ninth, or rather my tenth team, I literally just changed it right now. I was going through my list. And the one team who's your ninth team? Who's your ninth team? My ninth team is the Bucks, right? So oh, my tenth wow. team. You said um, the Bucks at nine? Yeah. So my tenth team, right? I yeah. have the Titans, dude. I had the Rams before. I actually bumped the Rams down one. And I know like the Rams had were impressive on offense. They impressively beat Philly. They beat Dallas. 
They almost came back and beat the Bills. They had the lead with two minutes left to go. But the Titans, like, like they're beating teams and they're putting up points. And I didn't expect them to put up points. Like, back to big, I believe, back to back, I believe, 30 point games. I can't fault for them for who's on their schedule. Like, they're playing good football. And I know, like, they're going to get hit a little bit by this COVID thing. But, like, going into week four, if I had to take COVID out of the issue, out of the equation, rather, I would put the Titans at number 10. But if with COVID in the issue, like, in the picture, I would put the Rams at 10. So, I guess, flip, I'll put the Rams there because of COVID. But, like, the Titans for me are right there. Really? You, that, COVID shouldn't be a factor. You can, you can put the, you can, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm putting the Titans yeah. then. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that t- COVID should not be a reason because it's one game, right? Uh, but yeah, um, so your 10th team is, uh, is indeed the um, Tampa Bay, but uh, not the Tampa Bay, Tennessee. Tennessee, Titans. yep. Yeah, uh, my 10th team is uh, the LA Rams. I had them at nine last week and went slightly down because of losing to Buffalo. And it's because you were in the position that you were down 28 to three. Um, I, I didn't like, I don't like teams that get that, that, that have such a large deficit already that, that big. I mean, uh, that was not impressive to me at all. They did look impressive until that second half came around. So uh, that's why they did show their spirit, but they did not the victory at the end of the day. So. That's the big difference between why Buffalo for me is six and the Rams are nine. Simple as yeah, that. So, fair enough, uh, man. That's why, I mean, I have uh, the I mean, and Rams at 10. So uh, that's why I have the Rams currently at my 10th seed. And uh, teams that make it just outside, just outside. Um, I have the Bucks at 11. I have, uh, I have the Titans at 12. And then I have my Indianapolis Colts at 13. Okay, so I have the Rams. Dude, I'm just looking at this. Like, I did not script this. But I have the three NFC West teams, 11, 12, and 13. And I know the Niners. uh, So I have the Rams at 11. I have the Niners at 12. And I have the Cardinals at 13. Cardinals, I mean, I know it's a bad day. But, man, you can't lose to the Lions. The Niners, like, they're getting their job done, even with all, all these injuries. And I'm not going to fault them yet until I see them lose badly to an elite team. And I don't know if that's even going to happen. And for the the Rams, I hit on it before. Really, it's a coin flip for me and the Titans, or for the Rams and the Titans, just up in the air. This week, it'll be, it'll be the Titans because I want to debut them on my list. Next week, it might be the Rams. Who knows? We'll see what happens next week going into our week four game picks. Yeah, uh, but real quickly, where do you have the – Eagles on your list, Arif. Oof. 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 Okay, so if I'm They're going through te- if I'm going through teams, right? So who can I say they're better than? I they're think better. they're better than the Lions, right? I think they're better than the Giants. I think they're better than the Jets. Right? Like that's for sure. Um, so I think that I'll take them above those. I don't, think, I'll take- I, don't, I don't think they're better than the Lions, I'll be honest. I think they're not better than the Lions right now. I think they're better. So I think the uh, teams they're better. I think they're better than right now. I'll listen to you right now. So the Jets, I listen to you actually, like, as in the worst above. I think the Jets are worse. I think the Giants are worse. I think the Broncos are worse. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the Jags are worse. I think the Bengals are still worse, despite that tie. I don't yeah. care. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Falcons are worse. Um, I think the Panthers are worse. I think the Texans are worse. I think the Washington football team is worse. And then I'll, I'll okay. I think the Washington football team is worse. I don't think the Texans are worse, even though we technically have a better record because they put up twenty-one points. I mean, I know we put up twenty-three, but dude, it's just such an uninspiring twenty-three. You know, I say we're better than the Texans, but what are that? What is that like? That's like I don't know, like twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth somewhere yeah, around there. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty three. I, I think it's around twenty four, twenty three. I think you're you're worse than the Vikings, and you're probably worse than the Chargers. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, and then the line. I think the lines are better than you right now, and the Dolphins mm-hmm. sadly 
are better than you right now. I think. Uh, I think the Dolphins <laughs> fits magic, man. It yeah, pops out. Yeah. Um, and it was because of the decisive win. They won thirty-one to thirteen. Uh, the Eagles haven't blown out anyone yet, so I, we'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah. Let's go into our week four game picks, man. Yeah. Uh, let's wrap this up. Um, so we we're starting with our Thursday night game. Broncos Jets irrelevant game. I'm not even gonna watch this game. Uh, back to back poor Thursday night football picks, you guys. Come on, man. Come it's on, always NFL. poor, dude. Ugh, uh, disgusting. Disgusting. Um, uh, I'm gonna go the Jets here because they actually have a quarterback who I've heard of before instead of Brett Ripien yeah, I, or. Who? Yeah. I, I will too. I'll go. I'll go the Jets too because I, I don't. Really I think cool. I had a thing where I would vote against Adam Gates, and I, I just think the Jets are either gonna fall out flat. I don't know if you heard the rumors, but Adam Gates might be get fired after this game if they end up losing. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but yeah, I did, I did. either they're gonna fall out flat and they're they're gonna suck to get him fired, or they're gonna play good unintentionally and let him have another week. Yeah. One of the two is gonna happen. I think. I think the Jets win. Yeah, it's a pick 'em game because I also don't care. Uh, yeah. Next game, uh, Chargers Bucks. I'm gonna go the upset here. I think the Chargers gonna win, uh, and it's because uh, I think Herbert will out outplay Brady. Um, Herbert will outperform Brady. Seven point favorites, by the way, the Bucks. Also, Leonard Fournette's not may not play also this week, and Chris Godwin's not playing this week as well. Just another. Couple so here, games. here, here's my thing. I don't think it matters. I think the Bucks are gonna win, <laughs> and I think, dude, I think this is my the week th- three week. Okay, fine, fair enough. Your upset of the week, I will mark that down. Upset of the week, just so I can clown you when the Bucks inevitably win. Fair enough. Uh. Next game, you have the Bucks, obviously, so um, yeah. no need to go into more analysis. Browns, Cowboys, uh, Brown, uh, Cowboys are four and a half point favorites. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Dallas here. As if a Dallas, if Dallas loses this game, shame on them. Uh, yeah, I want. I'm rooting for Cleveland. Don't get the it. Browns have won games that they should have won, but like. I know yeah, I'm big Baker on the needs, Baker, Baker Mayfield needs, Mountain. Baker needs to this step is the up. yeah, this is the game where Baker Mayfield has to have like a breakout game in 2020. Like you could argue his Bengals game was good until he threw that pick late in the game on a throw. I think it was like a deep post route, but the game was essentially like over almost at that point. Anyway, the Browns Cowboys. I'm gonna go with the Dallas Cowboys as well, and really, I think it comes down to the fact that Dak is better than. Baker like th- that's what I think of and honestly when it comes into like I, like Dak isn't really that clutch like he doesn't win clutch like this fourth quarter like comeback drives and everything like that like he's not the best at that but I don't even think it's gonna have to come down to that because I think Baker I hate to say it but I feel like he's just gonna stab himself on the foot that being said I will be voting or rooting for Baker Mayfield yeah, I'm going to be rooting for the Browns this game as well. I think so will uh, a lot of these people in Philly. Um, Ravens Ravens against the football team. The, Ra- the football team's 13 point dogs. God damn. Dude, that's so funny. Disrespect. Um, I think that actually, I think the I think the the football team makes it closer than 13. I think it'll go to like 11 or 12 or 10. What uh, a difference. <laughs> yeah. But a two I think score I'll, a game of all. Yeah. Uh, I, I still think it's two scores. The Ravens better win. Um, what a great rebound game! Like you go from the the best team in football to like a bottom five team in football. Yeah, it's unfair. And Chase Young's not playing either, which is also unfair. So uh, my bad. It's not. It's good. They're, the Ravens are going to cover. I, I forgot about Chase Young not playing. Yeah, the Ravens will cover this game. And I think Haskins is going to play trash too. So mm-hmm. I think he'll get benched. Um, Cardinals Panthers. I'm going to pick the Cardinals here. Um, although I can see the Panthers winning this game. Yeah, I mean, I could see the Panthers winning. I feel like I've, I, hit on a, I hit on it earlier, rather, when we were talking about the Panthers losing to, or rather winning against the Chargers. 
Panthers are sort of playing these close games that I really didn't think they'd be playing, especially with like a pretty new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, like lots of new defensive starters. But like they're go- they're getting out there and they're playing close games. But I think this is a good bounce back game for Kyler Murray. Like I said, he's going to play against an essentially new defense. Has hit on it multiple times. And I think the Cardinals are going to cover. My Colts Hurts. against the Bears. My mm-hmm. family's Bears. Yeah, my family are big time Bears fans. Uh, I'm an outlier. This is going to be tough. The Colts are two and a half point favorites. I think the Colts and Bears are right now around the same boat, honestly, right now in terms of like the NFL hierarchy. Uh, I think they're both in the top half, but like probably barely above the top half of teams. Uh, this is this is genuinely tough. I think I think the Colts defense is going to put a lot of pressure on Nick Foles. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Colts cover, and I think the Colts win this game. But uh, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it'll be like it'll be within seven points. I think. So. Uh, yeah. I'm going with the BDN in- energy, man. I gotta go with my man. Nick Foles, Super Bowl MVP, has more accolades than Phillip Rivers has and will definitely throw less picks than Phillip Rivers will throw in this game. Fun I'm fact, Phillip Rivers, Rivers, I believe now, has uh, has hit a new milestone. I believe he's at 400 touchdowns in his career. Oh, I thought you said he was going to have 12 kids, which is a record for any NFL player. But I guess that's a pretty good record as well. Shut up, Reeb. Uh, but yeah, 400 TDs. That's pretty impressive, man. Uh, but he has for 15 years of playing 400 TDs is definitely no small feat. Uh, only like five players or six players, I believe, have more touchdowns than him. Uh, congrats, Philip Rivers, on that on achieving that last game against the Jets. Um, but okay, so you have I have Colts, you have Bears. Um, next game, uh, Saints Lions. Um, this is big on whether Michael, Tom, Michael Thomas plays or not. Uh, honestly, it is because uh, at this point, the Saints need – they need their main guy back because uh, the Lions did just come off a great win against the Cardinals. I'm – the Saints here, though, and I think the Saints will cover it easily as well because I think Michael Thomas also played. As am I. I mean, Saints – even if Michael Thomas doesn't play – like I just have faith in this team. They're not stopping Kamara. They're not stopping. I, I actually, They're, yeah, I picked them. I picked them either way, actually. It, it, and uh, I just don't see them starting off one and three and losing to the Lions. And if it does happen, dude, I will, I will stick with my Lions eight and eight prediction, and I will get ready to pour water on you. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Dolphins Seahawks. This is unfair. Why this is a matchup that they gave the Seahawks. Uh, we don't need to talk about this game. Move on. Yep, Hawks all the uh, way. This yeah. is a, a very interesting matchup, the next one. Vikings yeah. at Texans. Both 0-3. Damn. Which I would not have pictured, man. I would not have thought a Mike Zimmer team and a Deshaun Watson team would both well, be I, I, Well, I expect – I'll be honest. I expected the Texans to start 0-3. They played the Ravens, the Chiefs, and the, and the Steelers, three teams that are better See, than I them. thought they would beat one of those teams, at least. But their uh, offensive it, it, line hasn't tough. held up. Their receivers it, haven't tough. played that well. No, the Vikings, on the other hand, I expected them to start at least two of them, right? I think that's a fair expectation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I, think, I think they have a better overall team than, like, the Titans or, or even their week one game. Uh, actually, no, their Green Bay Packers, I don't think they would have won. But I think they have an overall better team than even Indy. But they, Kirk Cousins choked in both those games that they, in the last two games. So it is what it is. Um. The Texans are four and a half point favorites. Um, they are having fans in NRG Stadium, by the way. Uh, I doubt it matters, though, to be honest. Uh, hey, any I, home field advantage is some sort of home field advantage. I guess. Um, I'm going to pick Vikings here. If the Vikings start 0-4, I, I, would, I, will, uh, I will be now be very nervous for them. But I think uh, I'm going to pick the Vikings here. So I'm noticing a trend. You pick against every single AFC South team. I don't think you've ever picked four of them a single time, other than well, your Colts. I picked I picked the Titans against against Jacksonville. Uh, I did that week two. Uh, fair enough, but that's like 
that's a you know a shit show. Anyway, I'm gonna go with the Texans, and honestly, I feel like this is the week where we're gonna see. Hopefully, I don't even know Will Fuller's still alive at this point, but if he is, I hope we'll see him. You know, torch the secondary. I hope we see Brandon Cooks. I hope we see Randall Cobb play well. And I know, like, dude, the lack of pass rushers. I don't know if Daniel Hunter is playing actually, and that will have an impact for me. But even if he is, he's going to be rusty. Like he's been hurt a lot through camp, and like he's just not going to be normal Daniel Hunter, especially his first game back. Like he, he's there's no way he's fully in like condition at all as well, or game shape rather. So I'm going to go with the Texans. I, I just think they have the better quarterback here, and the Vikings defense, like I said, lots of new pieces. And I think their their problems their problems continue, unfortunately. Yeah, man, I agree. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's rough. Uh, so you had so uh, the next game we have the Jags Bengals. Uh, this game, I think Joe Burrow finally gets his first win. Uh, I know I'm gonna go the Bengals. Simple as that. As am I. Um, I mean, you I think hit on it, man. I just think week four is a great time to get your first win. And you played hard football against the Chargers. He played tough football against the Eagles. I think his third start, is it? No, his fourth start. I think we're going to see him finally catch his dub. Yeah. Yeah, it'll go as wet. One, two, and one. It has to eventually, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Giants, Rams, and no need to talk about 13-point favorites. It's pretty crazy. Damn. Uh, Move on. Pats Chiefs, this is a good game. This should honestly be moved to the 820 game and move the Eagles down because uh, the Eagles suck right now. And Jimmy nice. G, Jimmy G uh, is playing her. And uh, I don't know how I feel about having this game being 820. Um, but anyways, it's fine. Uh, Pats Chiefs, 425 game on CBS. Uh, Seven point favorites for New England uh, for uh, Kansas City, and I think they cover. I'm gonna pick the Chiefs here. Yeah, uh, I'm high on the Patriots. I think we both are, as we said multiple times during the last few weeks. Not that high. <laughs> they don't have the talent, I think, on the defensive side of the ball, and I don't. I think this is the type of team where you need to have talent and scheme in order to beat the Chiefs, and. Honestly, on defense, there's maybe the Bears, maybe a team, also it's an the Steelers, and also it's an in Arrowhead, Arrowhead rather, and they have fans. Yeah, they, their their fans are different than it. So, like NRG Stadium, we said fans, but like, ah, but that's NRG Stadium. Arrowhead Stadium is rocking, bro. Even with like their little fan, like ten thousand people, it'll rock with that, man. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, I think I think. The, the Chiefs are going to win this game. And that home crowd advantage will definitely help. I really uh, want to go to an Arrowhead game once in my life. I think it would be sick. That would be sick. It would be a great experience. Uh, so, and then another 420. This is also a good game. Bills, Raiders. Uh, Raiders are three-point dogs against the Bills. Um, the Bills can get tested here. And the Raiders do like playing home, man. Uh, they did beat the Saints at home. I'm going to pick the upset here. I'm going to go the Raiders here. I know I've only been picking, like, I mean, I don't know anymore. So, like you said, the Raiders are three-point home underdogs. Second game in the stadium. I just think the Bills are too hot to stop right now. And I don't want to jump off that bandwagon too early and say they're going to lose a game until they actually do lose a game. And I see problems and I didn't really see, like, I know they blew a 28 to three lead, but they, they came back and ended up winning it in the end. So like, I can't really hop off the bandwagon until I have a real reason to do so. So I will pick the bills to win. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be a close game regardless. Um, Eagles Niners. Niners are seven point favorites, and uh, I don't think any analysis needs to be really be done. Wentz has no weapons. Uh, the Niners defense, even though it's depleted, it's still better than any of the defense. Actually, no, it's better, and that's not better than the Rams right now, but it's better than uh, a lot of the defenses in the NFL, even with the, the injuries they have. Um, and George Kittle's back, 
so good luck. Uh, yeah, this is not going to look well. And uh, I'm going to pick I'm gonna pick the Niners to win this game. I'm picking the Niners as well, praying that if I pick a team, if I don't, if I pick against the Eagles, I picked for them the last three weeks and they've lost. I'm just praying, you know, reverse voodoo this. Football gods, just help this team win a game. I just want to see I also the think that, win. I think the Niners also cover the spread too. Really I think it. they will as well. I think they're going to blow this team out of the water. <laughs> I'm just hoping Carson Wentz can play somewhat adequately. And I think – I honestly think Carson Wentz is in for a bounce back game. And I think you're going to see him carry some of that late game momentum at least, at least a little bit. And as well as he can throwing to John Hightower as his wide receiver too. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Steelers, Titans. I know it's postponed. We're, we're assuming it's going to be played Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to go with the Steelers because like we hit on earlier in the show with all the COVID things, Titans are really going to go in with less practice time, less time to implement a game playing, you know, less people just, they don't have practice. Like it's, that's a huge factor. And the Steelers get a few extra days to prepare and having that extra practice time. I'm going to go with the Steelers there. Yep. Uh, and you're right about picking against the AFC South because I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pick uh, the Steelers here and uh, my top five team Steelers and my Super Bowl coming uh, team coming out of the AFC. Uh, yeah, I like the Steelers uh, beating the Titans here if they play uh, on Monday or Tuesday. And then the last game we have the week, uh, Monday night, the Falcons 0-3 versus the Packers 3-0. All right, despite the Falcons being 0-3, they're, they're easily the, – they're, uh, they don't play like an 0-3 team. I'll put it that way. They, yeah, they, they've, they've excelled, they excelled last game. Um, from the, for the first three quarters. They excelled in the Cowboys game for the first three quarters. They excelled a lot in the first quarter of that Cowboys game. Uh, so you can easily say they're a two-and-one team that's masked as an 0-3 oh team. Uh, so this game will be interesting, actually, I believe. Uh, but I think uh, the Packers are going to pull through. And I think the Falcons are going to get a lead, and then they're going to blow it. But I don't think the Packers are going to cover. I think it'll be a close game. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I think you're going to see the Falcons play some great football in the first three and a half quarters. Yeah. But I also think at the same time, the Packers are going to be in the game the entire time, and you're going to see a late, like, Marquez Valdez-Scantling touchdown to win the game. And you're just going to be it, like, be what a shock. Who would have thought that the yeah. Falcons would choke another four-quarter lead? But you know what? I hope it happens just for the meme, man. I, and, dude, hot take. If Dan Quinn starts out 0-4, he's going to get fired before week eight. Oh, you're, oh, I was thinking you'd get fired before this podcast, the next podcast. Uh, if he starts off 0-4, yeah, that's, it's, it's not a good look. Uh, Arthur Blank would uh, cut that off. He should cut that dead weight off. But, um, yeah. I think it's a close game. I don't think the the Packers are going to spread to cover the spread. Um, all right, and I think we hit on all our week four games, Arib. Uh, I have nothing else more to say. Yeah, we've hit on it. Excited for another week of football. Some good key matchups as well. Hoping my team can finally catch a win. Doubt it will happen. Um, honestly, not much I can add. If you're really interested in my Eagles takes, I'm having an Eagles podcast that I'm starting hopefully this week. Call the Wednesday Wire. I will post it on the Fully Flicker podcast as well as my personal Instagram page. Anyway, I'm excited for another week of football. And honestly, that's all I can say. Hopefully, this COVID thing doesn't spread to all these other teams and the league shuts down because honestly, I'm having fun talking about football. I'm having fun watching football, except if it's the Eagles game. I'm just having fun. So hopefully, we don't see it fall apart on us. And yeah, that is it for me. Adios and goodbye.